of people who died. Now, as you and I know, over the last 200 years, scientists, economists, political leaders have made Malthus a laughing stock. Year in and year out, they have shown that food supply has been increasing even much, much more than population and that mass starvation has nothing to do with population increase. Mass starvation has to do with stupid economic policies. This is still within your lifetime. Think of Mao Tse Tung. When they tried to convert all the farms of China into communes, that was a stupid economic policy. What happened? Millions of Chinese died of starvation because they could not produce enough food with that very inefficient way of producing to the so-called communal farms. And I'm sure you will remember, those of you who are old enough, what was the first thing that Deng Xiaoping did in 1978 when he took over the leadership of China and tried to change the communist system to a more market-oriented system? What was the first reform? He allowed private property again in farming. He abolished the communes and suddenly China abolished mass starvation. It is not population that leads to mass starvation. It is wrong economic policies. And that is my first message to President Aquino and all the rest. As long as they assure us that we will have the right economic policies, plus, and I'm going to discuss this, fighting corruption, we can feed, house, clothe, educate any number of Filipinos that will be born today and tomorrow. And I will discuss this later on about the so-called carrying capacity of the Philippines. How many Filipinos can be accommodated in the 7,000 islands of this country? <laughs> now, let me fast track to the 1960s and 1980s. So for 200 years, England, Germany, France, all the different countries, and the United States, they were constantly increasing their population, and it was the increase in population that stimulated technological growth, inventions, and all sorts of scientific progress. <laughs> in fact, it was very much evident that in the first decades of industrialization, it was population growth that was the number one stimulus to people using their coconut, becoming more intelligent in their allocation of resources because they were very challenged by this increase in population to make use of their resources more intelligently. That is an undeniable evidence of history. No one can deny that it was the growth of population that stimulated scientific and economic progress. And now they want to remove that stimulus. So that's the first thing that I quarrel with the economists who say that we have to limit population growth. When for 200 years, it was population growth that was a very positive contributor to, I repeat, scientific progress and economic development. Now, what happened in the last century, the 60s and the 70s? Something was noticed by some scientists and they said, oh, that's in the past, it's different now because we have improved so much in medical science that we have reduced significantly the mortality rate. People are no longer dying like flies by plagues, by the flu, etc., etc. Some of you, I'm sure, have read that in the last century, millions died of a common flu, for example. 
in Europe, in Spain, in Ireland. But they said, well, things have changed. Because of the progress in medicine, the death rate has come down dramatically, while the birth rate is still more or less at the same level. And they say, therefore, there is an explosion in population. And they started using words like population bum. And the most notorious person to use that expression was a resource economist by the name of Paul Ehrlich. So for those of you who are interested in further studies, you just Google Paul Ehrlich, E-H-R-L-I-C-H. -H. And he wrote in the 70s a completely exaggerated forecast of the world entitled The Population Bomb. That is what I call a hysterical piece of work. And unfortunately, it influenced so many leaders like Lee Kuan Yew, like the Chinese leaders, and a number of people who aggressively, and Indira Gandhi, who aggressively tried to limit their population because they believed in that completely nonsensical book called The Population Bomb. Fortunately, there was another very prestigious resource economist and de demographer by the name of Julian Simon, a Jew. I want to emphasize that he's a Jew because don't ever, ever accept the false statements of the people defending their RH bill that it is only Catholics who don't agree with them. There's a Catholic bias. There have been so many Jews, so many Hindus, in fact, Hindus, hundreds of millions. Do you know why Indira Gandhi died? Assassinated? And another son was assassinated? One of the causes was hundreds of millions of Indians got so fed up with their population control program, forced sterilization, etc., etc., that they revolted. These Indians were not Catholics, but they had a natural sense that to control population is inhuman, especially if it means forcing the Indians to be sterilized or the women to be ligated. And that was the cause of the political failure of the, in, uh, of the Gandhi Empire. Now, what did Julian Simon do? He also wrote another book called The Ultimate Resource, referring to a human being as the ultimate economic resource. And he challenged Paul Ehrlich, this was in the 70s, Pustahan tayo. Because Paul Ehrlich said, because of his wrong economics, that by before the end of the last century, before 2000, there would be mass starvation and the prices of all natural resources, copper, cobalt, zinc, wheat, any possible resource that we need from the land, from the earth, he said, would go sky high and very few people would be able to afford them. So this was his scarifying prediction. That is why if I am going to use the expression prophet of doom, I would give that expression first and foremost to Paul Ehrlich. Julian Simon said, Pustahan tayo. In my studies, I see that prices of all natural resources, mineral resources, food, and so on and so forth, before the century is over, will be much slower than they were in the 70s.